This is Adjuster TV, Adjusters First. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Kaplik. Learn all about E&O and other insurance for adjusters at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. And by the National Association of Catastrophe Adjusters. Joining NACA will provide you with the resources you need to build a lasting career as a claims professional at adjustertv.com slash NACA. And by Adjuster TV Plus. Get unlimited access to a growing library of the best adjuster training videos created by the most trusted name in claims, Adjuster TV at adjustertvplus.com. Clear on how the firms work as far as, do, as, as an IA, do you work for several or do you work for one? Right. How does, how does that work? Yeah, good question. <clears throat> so, yeah, so, that, so um, obviously the carriers have a contract with um, one or more IA firms, and it may be that, you know, State Farm has, is contracts with a whole bunch of different IA firms, all the big ones. Um, if you are, uh, as, a, as, a, as a new adjuster, I would say that you're, you're going to be diversifying your, your opportunities for work is important, right? So if you're, you're going to want to get on everybody's roster for sure and try to go to all their networking events if you can, uh, whatever makes sense. Um, and then one of those is going to kind of pop up, right? That keeps sending you work and you, you kind of like build up some rapport with, with some of like the hiring, the, the dispatchers or the field managers that you're always working with. You're always working with the same people. And they're like, they want to keep you around because they like you. Mm -hmm. They're going to try to find ways to keep you busy. Um, if you are, um, as, as you, I'll put it this way. I think as you become more experienced as an adjuster, the more you're going to only re really work for one company. Okay. Right? So you kind of find yourself always working for the same company because they always have something for you to do, right? If you're feeling like you're, you don't really like the company culture or, you know, there may be greener grass someplace else, then you can jump over and restart the process of getting to know that other team at that other company. Um, but by and large, I think that, you know, if hurricanes hit and things like that, you want to be on standby for as many companies as possible. And when the first one pops up, yeah, I'm going, I'll, I'll go with you guys. I don't, who are you? I don't, it doesn't matter. I just need to get on the hurricane. Yeah, it doesn't matter learning. at that point. Yeah. <laughs> and then from there, then you, then now you've got a storm under your belt, right? And then you can kind of like, just keep playing that game until you get narrowed down to like one company. That's your company, right? I worked for pilot. For, I, I kind of did this in reverse a little bit. Um, they got me on my first storm in 2000, I think. And then they kept me busy for about 14 years straight. Wow. And I didn't work for anybody else. I didn't network. I didn't do anything. I think because it was like a more pilot storm. I'm, I'm, I was always with pilot, right? Yeah. Um, they kept me very busy. Um, and then the carrier client kind of changed things up they just, they weren't using as many IAs and they they were developing their own like staff cat team and so I wasn't getting calls anymore from those guys and I was like you know but they were still a client right so I wasn't I got kind of like notched into a little spot that I kind of painted myself into a corner I couldn't get out of yeah and so I had to like diversify out a little bit uh, I still worked for pilot but then I was working for CIS and I uh, did some stuff for Worley. I did some stuff for, um, did I ever do anything with Eberl? I just worked for Paysetter. Um, so, you know, I, I, I kind of branched out a little bit, but then it's still, like if I was still doing, still in that game, I probably would, I'd be working daily and then I'd be working for a bunch of companies. But for Cat, I would try to narrow it back down to one company that was just, because it's just easier that way, I think. Yeah, it um, is. And build that relationship with those people. Uh, yeah. So to, so to kind of sum up, I guess, to start off, I would have the expectation that you're going to pretty much go with whoever gets makes your phone ring first. Yeah. Um, and then sort of like dial it in from there. But going to, to NACA is a key piece of this um, because you could ask these questions to those guys and they'll tell you, they'll say, you know, they'll tell you exactly what they, they need for you to do or the kind of adjuster that they need you to be. The certifications that they really like, the ones that they don't care about. They don't care about you getting a drone. Nobody that I know is like, I've had you know, oh, we're building our drone team. Never used it. 
<laughs> yeah. You know, even State Farm, I think, quietly canceled their, like, in-house drone outfit. Um, but so it's so you're going to learn, right? So you're going to learn. You're going to talk to the people at Pilot and Alacrity and Transcend and, you know, Prime Co. and all these companies and be like, you know, what can I do to be like on your roster and be busy? That's, what, what kind of an adjuster is the kind of person that you keep busy? Oh, that's a good question. Well, here, this is, these are all the things that I really like to see and, you know, so on and so forth. So I got it. You'll come out of that. You'll come out of that. Uh, if you go, which I hope you do, because I'm going, um, you'll come out of it with a, a much wider field of view on the industry. For sure. Adjuster TV. Yes, this will be on the exam.